You may not know much about them, but programming languages are everywhere. They underpin our digital world, controlling everything from cameras to particle accelerators. Very early computers were controlled using physical modifications to the circuitry. However, computer scientists soon realised that more sophisticated methods were needed. By the late 1940s, we started to develop these artificial languages that could be used to control our machines. Nearly four decades later, Bjarne Straustrop, a Danish computer scientist, began work on a new general purpose programming language called C++. The reason C++ is, is interesting is that it has been used to do so many interesting things. It's, it's a programming language that was designed to be able to work really well with hardware, but to handle the complexity that you get in real application. So you start with the hardware and you handle complexity. Few languages can do both. They are either good at handling complexity, they are higher level languages, or they are good at handling hardware, they are lower level languages. C++ combines it. And that means you can find it on Mars in the Mars rovers at CERN for the atomic research. And they use it to program cars, they use it in the finance industry, in the games industry. It's everywhere. And so if I sound very happy, it's, I'm not trying to boast, but it, it is really good, feels good to have something you did have that impact. The thing that keeps me going is the applications. And then of course you go in and you look at the actual code. I, mean, I spent most of my time looking at little lines with black letters on them. Through a couple of steps from what I'm doing to what library builders are doing to application builders are doing, it'll brew your coffee for you and it'll focus your camera. The thing that makes it interesting is what you do with it. Programming languages change. They evolve just like natural language. When people are using something, they first use it sort of hesitantly and with a lot of problems, and then they become fluid. And then idioms emerge. What I do is I look at how people are using things and figure out how they can express what they're trying to express better. Quite often it involves taking an idiom and then you write a little library that allows them to say it more precisely, more directly in this code. And if that's still too much, maybe the language itself modifies to make it easier to either write that little library or to say things directly in the language. C++, like I first did it, is very different from what we have today. It's a much more flexible tool, it's a much more efficient tool. Unfortunately, it's also a bigger and more complicated tool, but it evolves. I've been working for a long time with C++, and there are some things that I wanted to do and I haven't been able to do yet. I would like C++ to be verifiably type and resource safe, which means you can't break the system. It is necessary to be able to break the type system sometimes because you have to deal with hardware, but I would like that to happen only when you ask for it specifically and very rarely. And I think I can do that. And, and reaching that goal is, is something I would like to see done, and I'm working on it. The work done by Bjarne and his team has had a huge influence on the world around us and it has been a significant positive influence on later languages and systems. The languages and techniques used in computer programming continue to evolve, but the young teams of today stand on the shoulders of the technological giants who came before.